do, if you have got a dog who pulls on the lead, um, this is what I would communicate with the dog about. Um, often we think that if we just explain to our dogs that being on the lead means they're safe, and if they walk nicely on the lead, as in loosely on the lead, then everyone has a nicer time. And explanations are, you know, they, they do have their purpose. But when we don't really know what our animals are experiencing, then it can be frustrating for us because we do all we can to reassure them. We want to give them freedom. And then their behavior is still the same. So I would always say that we need to start from the understanding in the in the way that we probably forgotten or just don't carry that awareness. The question I want to ask you so that you carry that awareness, number one is, is it natural for any animal to be on a leash, to be on a lead? And we've got to start from there because that is what animal communication is all about. It's about really understanding the feelings and the thoughts from our animal's perspective. So we've got to start at a place where we are them, all right? Because when we start at the place where we are them, it helps with how the conversation is going to go. And we need to be very patient and also in a way methodical with how we approach, particularly with something like wanting to help a dog to walk on leash in a acceptable way. Okay, I'm framing my words very kind of carefully. So think about this, when we're explaining things to our dog, I'm just putting like where we're at, explaining in a way is instructing. So there's not a lot of room for understanding. We feel that explaining is also a way of reassuring uh, that we're promising something if they did what we asked them to do, okay? And they're over here. Like I say, if you think about how if it's not natural for any animal to be on a lead, okay, they're over here I'm trying to balance my my hands <laughs> they're over here so when we're explaining we're we're like the other end okay so what animal communication does is it's asking us to start where they're at first allowing them to really tell us how they feel and then along the way we're going to have a much better understanding of how they're experiencing it. And then we bring in the tools, we bring in the training techniques, and we bring in, you know, even energy work to support them. That's why I actually personally, this has been one of my, oh, like big dreams. When I started in my animal communication journey, I had this almost like dream that I could team up with a dog trainer or a, a pet behaviorist. Because I thought, wow, if we can get to know how the animal feels, what they think from their position to begin with, then we can look at all the training techniques, all the different tools, and see which ones actually work, which ones actually compatible with what the animal's telling us. Because often dog training is like, try this, try this, do this, do that. You know, it's, it's step by step. And what's also interesting is that in time, um, you're seeing more of what is termed as positive dog trainers or positive behaviorists because there's a lot of animal communication in what they're doing. They don't just don't call themselves animal communicators. They still kind of got their scientific brain, but a lot of them are so much more intuitive. And I find that those of you who are drawn to animal communication, you know, would want to work with a dog trainer or, or a dog behaviorist as a positive reinforcement. So it's amazing how things have really progressed. Because when I, like I say, you know, was looking for a dog trainer that I could team up with, well, I guess I only ever approached a very traditional dog trainer and 
they certainly was not going to entertain my woo woo animal communication you know thing so it's so beautiful now to see and I have mentee'd um, in animal communication dog behaviors and I'm so happy to see the way they work it's absolutely beautiful how they communicate with the dog and because they've got that wealth of knowledge in the training in the tools in the techniques it just it's it's just a better way of really approaching the animal because you can have two dogs two collars two leashes and you know they're going to respond differently and on a note cat this is for you because you saw that video i posted about mia and mia walks absolutely beautiful on the lead i never trained her now i could turn around and think maybe somebody else trained her but i'm going to go through the steps and give you some examples of why she walks on the lead so beautifully as opposed to the challenges that you're having with bodhi right so i'm gonna kind of go into it so i'm gonna bring bodhi up what a character he is he's so much fun the thing is, when I have Bodhi in my presence, all I want to do is play. I mean, talk about, like, it's so hard to concentrate doing this teaching slot because all I want to do is play with Bodhi. So, as opposed to the challenges that you're having with Bodhi, right? So I'm going to kind of go into it. So I'm going to bring Bodhi up. What a character he is. He's so much fun. The thing is, when I have Bodhi in my presence, all I want to do is play. I mean, talk about, like, it's so hard to concentrate doing this teaching slot because all I want to do is play with Bodhi. So you'll have to, uh, I have to kind of almost <laughs> keep my feet on the ground and go, come on, Bodhi, we're working here. We're not playing. So what I get about Bodhi is his character, okay? So Kat, you're laughing. He is like that, yeah. So you've got to start with their personality, all right? So I'm going to bring Mia in because she's such a great kind of example of how when you look at, you know, I get lots of comments where people look at me and go, wow, you know, then you do a great job. Look at the way she walks in the lead. I'm like, number one, I say, look at her personality. Look at her character. You know, she's not one to push or pull. She's not like in your face. Um, she's got a, a little bit of a, you know, gen she has a gentle demeanor. Don't get me wrong with dogs. She can stand up for herself, but with humans, she's a bit of a pleaser. She's, you know, she doesn't want to upset anybody. So she's already got that character, that personality about her. Bodhi is like, ah, charge is what I get. Okay. So Imagine, therefore, the life of Mia, where she's more amenable, more cooperative, and doesn't want to upset anybody, you know, doesn't want to get into trouble. You put a lead on her. You put a collar on her. It makes her go, oh, oh, okay, what's happening here? So either she'll cower and run away or hide, because that would be more likely, you know, that her temperament and personality would do that. You put a lead or a collar on Bodhi in my senses. He's just like, what's that? You know, because outdoors is so exciting for this guy. All right. So I'm checking Kat that this is, you know, this is Bodhi all in all. So when you start there, Kat, can, you know, this is what's important. Say to yourself, imagine if you, you are Bodhi with just all that energy packed in his body his youth, his brain. I mean, I don't know what goes on in his head, but he's just, like I say, full of fun, full of action. And I don't think he moves slow at any point. So can you see already? <laughs> yeah. So knowing that, I hope what that does is allows you that empathy Therefore, when he has a collar or a lead, his connection with what that collar or the lead or the halty is about is actually quite confusing for him. He's like, what? 
what are you putting on this for me? He's, he's just thinks it's decor. So what he's saying to me right now, which is making me laugh, is he's saying it's, a, it's like you put decorations on him, like he's a Christmas tree, you know? So so what if you've got a Christmas decoration on his snout? And so what you're kind of pulling him and he's saying you're always shouting <laughs> when, when he's running ahead and you're pulling the lead. So for him, it's just noise. And no doubt, I know you've done your training. No doubt, I know you've done your homework and you've been extremely patient with Bodhi. But what I'd like you to do at this moment in time, taking it step by step, okay, is to drop your agenda that you want him to understand what the whole tea is about. Drop the agenda that, you know, you want him to walk nicely on the lead for now. I'm not saying that's not the outcome. Um, so you've written, it makes sense. That is so good. I do put a bandana on him too. Oh, there you go. He's your Christmas tree. <laughs> okay. Well, he looks very, he's very handsome. I'm getting very distracted with him. It's very hard to communicate with him seriously. You know, I'm really having to hold myself back because all I want to do is tell jokes. And anyway, I might have to take his photo off because I can't concentrate. I think I will do that. <laughs> I need I need Bodhi away. So because I know I want to help you, Kat, and give you kind of the step by step. So I've had to stop being distracted by him. I would just go telepathically and run and play with him. So this is what I'll do. So start off with just connecting in with the sensations. How he feels the minute he's outdoors. You've got to start from there. I don't think we appreciate what it's like for dogs. We're going to talk about dogs. What it's like for our dogs when they're outside, how their senses are completely and utterly stimulated and triggered. And all they want to do is, you know, freedom. So start there and let him talk to you. You've spent enough time getting him to understand it really from your perspective, you know, saying things like, if you walk nicely, then I can take you, you know, to more places and I'm not always pulling you, da, da, da. You know, just for the moment, just park that and say, okay, we've done all that and there is some improvement, but, you know, it's still kind of going around in circles. So, um, yeah, he is super distracting. It's really funny because this is when I'm going to go off tangent a bit. This is when animal communication is as real as it's going to get. You know, I've never met Bodhi. I mean, yeah, I could turn around and go that photo. He looks really kind of strong and cute and handsome. But I just see I'm still talking about him. So I'm being distracted. So I have to I have to learn with him that I'm going to just go. Sorry, Bodhi. So start with really connecting and saying, what are the sensations that you experience? You've got to be him. And when you are him and when you really get it off him, what is going on with his body? You know, on a very conscious level, you can go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he can be very excitable and things must be very exciting for him. That's too cerebral. I want you to really ask him to share it so your own body feels it. And then I want your head to actually experience what happens to his head when he's outside and he loves being outdoors, okay? Even if that takes you two or three communications where you're just experiencing it, right? The 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 trick is to drop all agendas. I mean, he's walking the way he's walking. You've been managing it the way you've been managing it. Just say to try something different. I'm gonna, for the next, you know, few weeks when I communicate with him, I'm, I'm gonna listen. And I'm going to listen with body sensations. I'm going to listen with what goes on is in his. It's like if he could talk to you by sharing sensations, if he could talk to you by sharing how his senses are experiencing when he's loving outdoors or first getting out the door, or boy, the car. I mean, the car is like, what? you know. So I want you to almost be him. Because then what that does is Bodhi goes, ah, my mum has taken the time 
to really get how I feel. And that makes a huge difference to our animal. When they know we've spent that time being them, really, really understanding how the world is for them. And for someone like, for a dog like Bodhi, that will mean a lot to him. So that's your first step, okay? Then I know that that's going to do something for you. You're going to go, oh my good God, how on earth, how on earth does he even, you know, keep to what I ask him to do and even keep to the point where if I say to him, stay in the car or get out of the car, how does he even do it? So that level of appreciation is really going to help you because it's going to help you work through what strategies, what methods, what techniques is going to help him. Okay. All right. So I've given you lots of food for thought and um, let me know how you get on. All right. I'm just going to say goodbye to Bodhi for a moment before he jumps all over. <laughs> well, it's a dream talking to you, Bodhi. I'm kind of glad it's telepathic because I have a feeling you probably knocked me over by now. <laughs> 